Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest today is Carrie Jones, a functional health and hormone doctor and head of medical education at Rupa Health. We'll be back with our interview after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs, you have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place. And they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to Rupa Health. Dot com. That's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. We're so pleased to speak with Dr. Carrie Jones today. Dr. Jones is a hormone expert with over 17 years in the field of functional and integrative medicine. She is also the head of medical education at Rupa Health, who is also our podcast sponsor and she lectures all over the world on the topic of health and hormones. Welcome, it's so nice to have you today. Thank you so much for having me here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, yeah. Um, so on your website, you mentioned that, you, that what you really do in layman's terms is help hormonally challenged people feel less crazy through real talk, education, sarcasm, funny analogies, and social media videos, and the occasional swear word. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about your process? It sounds so interesting. Yeah, well, I found a long time ago that dealing with hormones or talking with women about hormones is a lot like herding cats. <laughs> and so <laughs> women come in and they're like, I don't feel well and my hair's falling out or I can't sleep or I'm gaining weight or I'm having really bad PMS. And no one's really ever talked to them about hormones. You know, we get a little bit of hormone education in puberty. Like we get a little, maybe a little bit in like middle school or high school. And then we're kind of just left to our own devices. Mm -hmm. And so what I found is that it's just really helpful to be relatable because a lot of us are experiencing hormone issues, even those of us in the functional and integrative world and, you know, proper lab work, full intake, all the things that were taught at A4M and women just thrive. They, they just love it. And because I'm, um, you know, like I have the occasional swear word. So I'm pretty <laughs> real with my patients when I'm talking with them about hormones. And as I work to help them just feel more empowered and in charge of their body and um, feeling better overall. Yeah, and that's so relatable for them as well. So that's yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of them haven't really had much of a workup before. You know, maybe they've been given a little bit. You know, they say, like, oh, I've had a workup, it's fine. But you find out it was their thyroid, you know, or but like TSH, just one marker. Or they're like, they got their cholesterol drawn. And I'm like, well, you know, close, but no, that's not a hormonal workup. We got to do a little bit more. So when I come in, um, with the education that I have and that I've been given, and I actually really do a full lab workup on them. They're just, you know, shocked and amazed, and then we work to get to the bottom of things. Okay, on, on like a case by case basis, then mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are some ways in which you would recommend to a patient with high cortisol levels to get better sleep? Oh my gosh, that's and that's so one. common, isn't it? Right. Yeah. With so many people mm -hmm. that are super stressed out and they're not sleeping and they're. They can't fall asleep, they can't stay or asleep. Or wake up in the middle of the night. Totally, and, yeah. wake up in the mm -hmm. middle of the night, at one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning. So a big thing with high cortisol, especially at night, is just your sleep hygiene. So are you up late on your phones? Are you up watching TV? Um, are you working, getting that like extra second boost? So you put the kids to bed and everyone's asleep and so finally you have peace and quiet and so you quick pull out your computer, 
and you're answering emails and paying bills and doing all the things. So you're very wound up mm -hmm. and then you try to go to sleep and your body's like, no, I'm, I'm awake now. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I thought we were doing stuff. And so at the very minimum, I'm asking, what do you do at night? And then working backwards from there. I'm also asking about their day. How much caffeine are you drinking? Talk to me about your stress in your day. You know, do you exercise? Talk to me about your diet. What's, what's going on that can be contributing to the, the not sleeping, the high cortisol at night? Then I'm talking to them about hormones because hormones play a big role in um, our sleep and then our, our cortisol. So I, for females especially, talking to them about ovulation and progesterone, testosterone and estrogen. And then cortisol just being cortisol, mm -hmm. it's, I'm, we're looking at glucose and we're looking at inflammation. And so I'm starting to turn over rocks and go down rabbit holes to figure out what's going on. So sometimes, hopefully, it's really simple. Sometimes it's just, oh, you're right, I'm up late on my computer because it's my quiet time. And other times it turns out, you know, they have a ton of stress or they're fighting infections or glucose dysregulation and maybe they're going into perimenopause. And so it's, it's a lot broader. Mm -hmm. And so we're really having to evaluate cortisol from a lot of angles. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend to someone who is up late on their computer? Just, <laughs> just don't do it. Well, we're all guilty, right? Like yeah. we're all, we all do it. And so um, at the very least, I'm like at least try to change your screen to not be as bright to, you know, either switch it to like the red screen. You can obviously, there's apps for that. Mm -hmm. Wearing blue light blocking glasses. If you're on your computer, at least be using uh, like a sleepy time tea or a calming tea or calming herbs. Sometimes okay. people are up on their computer having a glass of wine mm -hmm. thinking it's going to relax them but we know alcohol makes our sleep 10 times worse and so i'm like all right let's switch out your drink let's let's go for calming herbs instead mm -hmm. instead of you know something like wine and try to minimize what you're doing on your, on your computer do you really have to yeah. be on your computer for two hours at night can you shrink it down to an hour and then have some sort of wind down routine. Wind with a D, yes. not wine with an E. <laughs> yes. So that's usually where I start. Are there any other healthy habits you recommend to your patients with high stress and high cortisol levels and maybe some prevention habits? Yes, so we can't avoid stress and stress is kind of at a 10 out of 10 high right now. And so really it's just stress management. Like what can you manage? What can you say no to? What can you set boundaries around? Um, it's um, when it's when it's day to day stress as opposed to, let's say, um, infection or inflammation like s chemicals, toxicants. Like if we eliminate those and we're just talking about our day to day stress, mm -hmm. I'm like, are you sure you have to say yes to everything? Right? Are you sure you have to put everybody first before you put yourself first? Are you sure you can't take time for you in your day? And for a lot of my patients, it was kind of an aha moment for them when I'm like, I think you even put the dog ahead of you. Like, can we? They love my dog, amazing, but like, can we just sometimes put the dog a little higher or put you a little higher than the dog? And so these little just feedback tricks to people, you know, are you sure, can you take five minutes and do a quick meditation? Can you, you know, do five minutes of stretching in the morning? Can you take, when, can you take a break every hour and do a quick breathing exercises? Set your reminders on your phone. And just these little things add up over time. I'm not asking for an hour of meditation, that would be great, but mm -hmm. most people can't do that. You know, I'm not asking you to cut out all the stress in your life and move to an island and just hang out. That would be great too. <laughs> it would be. Right? But I'm just saying, what are the little things we can do in the day? Because they definitely add up to help us lower our cortisol. Yeah, I mean, especially when you put it in terms of five minutes, that's yes. not that much time. Yes. You can do that when you wake up or right before you go to bed or both. Right. And a lot of people are scrolling, right? They use, they scroll on their phone to, is their mind mental break? I'm like, all right, instead of scrolling, can you instead do five, 10 minutes of a meditation app or five, 10 minutes of, yeah. you know, a breathing exercise or get up and walk or get up and stretch or do something else that's more relaxing as opposed to mindlessly scrolling through social media, which again, we're all guilty. We all do it. Yes, absolutely. But <laughs> if we can trade out some times for, for stress relievers mm -hmm. um, and just build those into our day, put them in our schedule, like I said, these baby steps will add up over time. Yes, for sure. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, meditation apps that you like specifically? Well, I have no affiliation, but I personally use Insight Timer because I like on Insight Timer when it's free. Mm -hmm. um, and two, you can set the time that you want. So if I have literally 10 minutes, then I go to the 10 minute section and pick 10 minutes. Yeah. And I also like that you can do guided or just music. So mm -hmm. if I want somebody to do 
to guide me through 10 minutes of you know whole body relaxation or if i'm like look i just need 10 minutes to zone out i need ocean music or i need you know like jungle birds you know <laughs> whatever <Right. laughs> it is and then i can just sit there and deep breathe um i like that i have that choice mm -hmm. there are a lot of great apps out there that's just what i happen to use yeah i've, I've used that app too mm -hmm. and it's it, you can definitely choose uh your time and what you like so that's cool yeah can you please explain the cortisol awakening response and how it is beneficial Yes, yeah, so the cortisol awakening response is a natural phenomenon that happens every morning. Well, it should happen, let's say that. So when you're asleep, your brain, your hypothalamus, is talking to your pituitary, and your pituitary is talking to your adrenal glands. So you have ACTH, and ACTH is knocking on the adrenal's door, going, now, can, can you make cortisol now? Can you make cortisol now? And the adrenals are like, no, no, you know, like, they're sleeping, they're sleeping. And then when you wake up, and light comes into your eyes, like the act of waking up, light coming into your eyes, takes that blunting off and boom, you start to make cortisol. So your cortisol will rise pretty significantly in about the first 30 to 45 minutes of waking. And then it peaks and gradually starts to decline throughout the day. So that rise, that sharp rise is the cortisol awakening response. Okay. The reason we have it, for a couple of reasons. One is to give you some energy and get your booty out of bed, right? Like, well, we should. We should have that in the morning. <laughs> Not everybody has that. Number two, it's to help with blood sugar. We've been fasting all night long, and it's to help, because you haven't eaten, um, that rise in cortisol, give you a little bit of, of glucose in the system. Two, it can be anti-inflammatory. You wake up with aches, pains, you're stiff, and after about 30 to 45 minutes of movement, waking, you know, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not actually as stiff as I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you wake up and you think, oh my gosh, I'm feeling run down, I might be getting sick. 30 to 45 minutes later, you're like, oh no, I'm not sick, I'm actually pretty good, because your cortisol has gone up and, and, okay. and kind of dealt with it. So it's a helpful thing. The problem is, a lot of people wake up and they're like, I hit snooze, or it takes me two hours to wake up, it takes me two cups of co coffee to wake up, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ooh, you don't have a good cortisol awakening response, <laughs> we need to work on that. Yeah. Some people rest snooze like, five times oh my or gosh. more yeah or it, they they snooze through the morning and then they drink coffee all day to make up for it and i'm like oh i, I mean <laughs> i'd like to test you but i don't even have to test you i know your things aren't good mm -hmm. but some people go the opposite way some people wake up and go from zero to 100 immediately they're mm -hmm. anxious they're fight or flight their heart's racing and again i know their awakening response probably shot really high um to, for whatever reason and now they feel it and so if they remain stressed, it, it then won't go down probably, right? It like can be tough yeah. or, or sometimes, so they'll, they can have that. So they're sort of all day in this fight or flight, anxious, low grade anxious feeling, or maybe even high grade, mm -hmm. or they peak really high like a mountain and then they crash. So they're like in the morning, I just feel fight or flight, my heart, my anxiety, my jitteriness, or I'm sort of feel on. And then in the afternoon, I'm exhausted. I'm like, right, because you went to the peak of a mountain and fell off. That so that sense. long drop is a significant drop and you feel it. And so if your mountain was a little lower, it wouldn't be so bad of a crash, but you actually literally crash and you're exhausted. Yeah, so what would you recommend for someone like that? <laughs> right, <laughs> what do you do with the cortisol awakening response? Yeah. <laughs> so the great thing is your cortisol awakening response is really light and dark driven. Your whole circadian rhythm is light and dark driven. So in the morning, you wanna get full spectrum light exposure, which is what's great about filming this here in Florida, mm -hmm. because every morning I open up my blinds and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, it's I, beautiful. It's beautiful, <laughs> and I live in the Pacific Northwest. We don't get that much sun, so it's a, it's a little bit harder for us. We have to fake it. Mm -hmm. So getting full light exposure first thing in the morning, which doesn't include your phone. So I tell people, go outside, open your window, um, you know, take a little walk, or if you wake up and it's still dark out, mm -hmm. You can actually buy those like full spectrum light boxes, oh, turn okay. them on, get 10 to 20 minutes of exposure, and that can be really helpful. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's didn't quick and it's those. easy, and a lot of people will have them like next to their desk when they work. You know, they, there's, again, I don't have any affiliation, but there's the happy light. You'll hear of the Vera Lux happy light, and a okay. lot of people will have them, you know, they'll turn them on while they're working in the morning to help give them some full light exposure. Okay. At night, you want to do the opposite. You want to be in complete darkness, which goes back to that cortisol at night. You want to dim the lights, mm -hmm. wear the blue light blocking glasses, and then sleep in complete darkness. And that just helps set and reset your circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. which goes a long way into your cortisol awakening response. Now, it takes time to reset your cortisol awakening response. So if you're 
surviving off of coffee all day long. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change overnight. It's, it's going to you know right. take some work, but okay. it's a really good step. Yeah, thank you for those helpful tips. Yeah. So if a patient says they're fine, but they don't really feel fine, <laughs> <laughs> what are the initial steps you'd recommend for them to take? Yeah, and that happens a lot, right? They're, they're like, I been, went to my provider and mm -hmm. I feel terrible and I got some blood work done. And my, I got an email back in my portal that said everything's fine, you know, right. good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't feel fine. And that happens all the time. And unfortunately, I just feel um, in an acute care model, unless you actively have some sort of, you know, you're sick, you've got the flu or a virus or something, um, in, an, in a 6 to 15 minute visit, it's hard to really get to the root cause of an issue mm -hmm. as best you can. So when somebody's like, I got worked up but I, and told I'm fine, mm -hmm. what I usually find is either they need to dig deeper or their version of fine on the lab work is not my version of fine, right? Like the ranges on lab work, and I know a lot of practitioners listening are nodding their heads right now because they're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. how many times have you gotten even just blood work back, told they're fine, and when you actually look at the results, you're like, but they missed this and they missed this and they missed this or, you know, like the cutoff is is 200 and you're 199 like at what point why wouldn't they say so you're to you not you're like you're right at the cliff <laughs> yeah. like why don't we pull you off the cliff before okay. you just fall over mm -hmm. and so that's a big one that I find when somebody's like I don't feel fine it's either usually we, we turn over some more stones and really evaluate what they did have worked up that makes total sense <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience today besides all the wonderful knowledge you've already <laughs> shared. <laughs> I would just go, definitely go back to that circadian rhythm. You know, humans work on a circadian rhythm and our hormones, especially female hormones work on a circadian rhythm. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, if we don't have our master circadian rhythm, so our, our 24 hour cycle set and reset every day, mm -hmm. especially as females, that can really affect our reproductive hormones as well. Um, our in our brain, our, our clock genes, our sort of pacemaker, mm -hmm. one again sets our day, but it also can help um, contribute to how we release estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. And so for a lot of women, who primarily is who I you know work with, mm -hmm. when women come in and they're like, oh my gosh, my ovulation is wonky or my cycles are wonky, I don't understand, we go back to, are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. You know, are you, What is your circadian rhythm like? Are you getting that full light in the morning? Are you getting darkness at night? And oftentimes they're like, oh, no, I haven't been. My sleep has been totally off. I've been so tired in the morning. I have been staying up a whole lot later. And if we get that under control, I find that the reproductive hormones, the estrogen, the progesterone, et cetera, um, it's at least it's a 50 percent improved. Well, that is such yep. a great program that you have. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you yeah. for all of your insight today. It's been such a pleasure. I appreciate it, yes. <laughs> of course. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave us a five-star review. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.